In problem 4, we're asked to find the slope of the tangent line to the graph of f of x equal x squared times arc cosine of x at the x value negative 1 half. Now we keep in mind, we're going to put several pieces together here, but let's keep in mind that uh, to uh, find the tangent line to a graph, we need to evaluate the derivative at that particular uh, x value. So to calculate the sl excuse me the slope of the tangent line, to calculate the slope we're looking for, we need to find the derivative of the function and evaluate it at the number negative one half. Now, as we look over here, that means we're going to need to determine what f prime of x is. Before we can calculate f prime of negative one half, we need to know f prime of x. And so we glance at our func function, and we notice that our function is actually a product of two different functions. It's the product of x squared and arc cosine x. So as we're looking ahead to our uh, issue, we recognize to calculate this derivative, we're going to have to use the product rule. So not only are we going to have to learn uh, to use what we've learned about finding derivatives of uh, inverse trig functions, we're going to have to also simultaneously implement the use of the product rule. Well, I've uh, rewritten, I've pre-written a lot of the work here, so let's get started with, I'm going to reveal a little bit at a time. Uh, remember that when we're finding the derivative of the product of a product, it's the first function. Let's uh, let's make this clear here. It's the first function which we have here times the derivative of the second function. Of course, the second function is arc cosine of x, and we're illustrating the derivative of that second function here, and then it's plus the second function, here we've got that second function, times derivative of first. And here we're showing derivative of first function. So what's new about this problem, of course, for us is that we have to calculate the arc cosine, the derivative of the arc cosine of x. Now, this is something that maybe I haven't made clear in the past. Let's, uh, let's remember the formula for the derivative of the arc cosine. Now this formula really is the chain rule version of the formula because we're assuming a u is some expression in x. And the, so it says to find the derivative, we just say negative one over uh, the square root of one minus that expression squared times the derivative of the expression. But in our example here, we don't have arc cosine of an expression of x except that it's just x. So in this position, let's see here, in this position, since it's just x here, we'll have only an x there, and of course the derivative of x is just 1. And so let me, let me make it perfectly clear what I'm trying to say here, is that if we're finding the derivative with respect to x of the arc cosine of just x, arc I'm sorry for that, arc cosine of x, then that's going to be negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared times 1. And so we don't even need to write that out there. And this would be similar for all of the other inverse trig function formulas, that uh, we don't need the u prime if we're just taking the inverse trig of x alone and finding that derivative. Well, let's move on now. So that tells us on this next line we can calculate these pieces. Here's our x squared. The derivative of arc cosine of x, of course, is negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared, which I've written right here. And then it's the second function, arc cosine x, times the derivative of the first function. Well, the derivative of x squared is 2x, and I've written that here. Well we can do one step of simplification. We can go ahead and multiply together this x squared and this fraction, which will leave a numerator of negative x squared over the square root of 1 minus x squared, and then, of course, plus 2x times arc cosine of x. 
out. What we talked about previously is all, all we're trying to do here is find the slope of the tangent line at x equal negative one half. We've found the derivative of the function, so now we need to evaluate that derivative at negative one half. And uh, I believe I've shown the steps below here, so let's look at these steps. So that's the slope we're looking for. Now, as we evaluate this derivative at negative one half, of course we replace each of these x's with negative one half. So this fraction is the negative of the number negative one half squared. The negative of negative one half squared. And the denominator is square root of one minus the number negative one half squared. There's one minus the number negative one half squared, of course. And of course the negative one half goes in for this x and also goes in for this x. And then we begin our job of evaluation and simplification. So uh, we've, we've done the substitution. Let's do a little bit of simplification here. When we square negative one-half, we get positive one-fourth. And when we take the opposite of positive one-fourth, we get negative one-fourth. Same thing in the denominator. When we uh, square negative one-half, we get positive one-fourth. So under the radical, we have mi one minus that positive one-fourth, which I'm showing here. Then we have, in this position, two times negative one-half, which is negative one. So I'm writing that as not negative, uh, understood negative one times, or we'll just change this positive to a negative a minus sign, of course. So now we have arc cosine of negative one-half. Now, the next step is going to show how we're going to simplify this fraction. So uh, let, let's look at that. Uh, here we go. Here's the fraction. We need to simplify it. So um, we're going to do 1 subtract 1 fourth in the denominator, and so we get 3 fourths under the radical. So negative 1 fourth divided by 3 fourths. Now, it, it may be a little bit hard to tell, but of course the square root of 3 fourths, see the the square root of the fraction 3 fourths is the same as the square root of 3 divided by the square root of 4. And the square root of 4 is 2. So here's the square root of 3 and here's 2. That's all I've done there. Now when we divide a fraction by a fraction, we multiply by the divisor. So here's what we're dividing into, negative 1 fourth, and we're going to multiply it with the reciprocal of this divisor. So instead of the square root of 3 over 2, it's 2 over the square root of 3. And then you see 2 and 4 will reduce to 1 half. So it leaves a 1 in the numerator and a 2 root 3 in the denominator. But of course it's negative because it's a negative times a positive. Now the next thing we need to be concerned with is how we evaluate the arc cosine of negative 1 half. I believe I started that here. In fact, I think I've got the whole thing. We need to recall that with the um, arc cosine function or any trig inverse function, the result is an angle that can be measured in radians. And so I'm just calling this arc cosine negative one half by the value theta. And so then I can take that information and say, oh, okay, if that's, co if that's true, then the cosine of theta has to be negative one half. That's what we know about inverse trig functions. Not only that, the arc cosine function result or range has to be between 0 and pi over 2. And that's what I'm saying here. So there's two conditions that must be satisfied. And thinking about those two conditions will give us the result. So let, let's, let's look real quickly here. Let's see if I have... If we can think of a unit circle. Okay. And uh, where is the cosine negative one-half? Well, it would be, uh, here's where the first coordinate is negative one-half. So the cosine is negative one-half, either at that position or this position. But we're restricted for values between 0 and pi over 2. So we'll only consider things in the first and second quadrant. And so we're talking about this angle. And then if we remember this angle right here. So if we remember our trigonometry, that angle is 2 pi over 3. And that's the information we need here. So we decided that this fraction simplifies to negative 1 over 2 root 3, which we did here, 
And then we have minus the arc cosine of negative 1 half, which we just decided was 2 pi over 3. And so here we have our final result. A, a messy looking slope, but that's it.